Hi there. Hi. See those flowers right there? I was giving them after a show last night. We went out after the show, so I took them to the drag. I took them to a drag show. Picture me in the club. I uh, didn't know we were going to a club either, so I was wearing cowboy boots, a Garfield sweatshirt, holding flowers. That's a maniac right there. Welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Carly, and today I wanna talk about the crimes of Twilight. I recently did a watch along in a movie theater full of the hottest people in the world. We watched the 2008 cinematic classic Twilight, and I just kind of talked shit during it. That was, that's my job. Y'all have given me a platform and that's on you. It was so much fun. And that movie is bonkers bananas crazy. It's amazing. It's so funny and so good, but bad, but good. And I wanted to talk about it here as well because I can't get it out of my head. Cinematic classic directed by Katherine Hardwick, starring everyone's favorite lesbian, Kristen Stewart, everyone's favorite soy boy, Robert Pattinson. I always hate pledging allegiance to famous people on this channel because every famous person is a dirt bag, horrible person. So I'll be like, I love Robert Pattinson. And people will be like, didn't you know that he drunk drove and he hit a puppy mill? And I'm like, okay, Jesus. But as far as I know, I mean, amazing performances. And by that, I mean the most robotic, insane performances ever given on planet earth. These are two people that I know to be good actors. Like Kristen Stewart, Oscar dominated. They're giving the worst performances of their lives and it's iconic. So I thought we would just go chronologically and I would break down what I deem to be the crimes of Twilight. It's auteur cinema at its finest. It is high camp. It is so funny. Watch these movies. And there's something nice about watching a teen movie that knows what it is. It's like, this is kind of bad, but also amazing. It's the same vibe as like the Hunger Games in a way. You're like, this is bad, but also this is iconic. Hiya, I'm coming to you hair done, no makeup, chaotic combination to discuss this video's sponsor, Care Of. Care Of is a subscription company that ships high quality vitamins, supplements, and powders to your door every month. The world of vitamins can be so overwhelming and confusing. I just like never know what I need and Care Of makes it super easy to know what vitamins, supplements, powders you should be taking because you can just take their online quiz. It's super, super quick and super, super easy. You can just go online, answer a couple of quick questions about your diet, your lifestyle, your health goals, and then Care Of will tell you what vitamins you should be taking. Care of also helps you stick to a healthy routine when life gets crazy. You can get daily reminders to take your vitamins on the app and see how many days in a row you've taken it. They have travel ready packs. And if you ever feel like you need support in different ways, your lifestyles change, you can just retake the care of quiz and they can adapt and change with you and your health goals. One of the vitamins that I've been taking with care of is their vegan D supplement. I am primarily plant-based and this supplement helps support you bone health, but I also love it because it helps you keep healthy when you aren't getting enough access to the sun. I live in Canada. The sun sets at like 4.30. I've also been taking iron with them and it makes me feel so, so energized. Again, I don't eat a lot of meat, so I need iron on my diet. I can really feel the difference. Like I actually feel like I can get out of bed and do my life with the energy I get from Carob's iron. Carob's daily personalized packs are made of a plant film that makes them entirely complete postable and care of is backed by the latest science and research so you can feel good about what you're putting in your body. 2022 has really been a big vitamin and supplement year for me and it has really turned around the way that I think about my own health and my energy. It just it never really occurred to me that the things that I put into my body <laughs> can affect how I feel about myself and the world around me. If you want to get started with Care Of, go to the link in my description below and take their quick quiz to see what vitamins and supplements they recommend for you. And click the link in my description below and use the code UNCARLY to get 50% off your first order with Care Of. Again, use the link in my description below and use the code UNCARLY and get 50% off your first order with Care Of. Thank you so much for sponsoring this video. Let's get back into it. Let's just get into it. Bella moves to Forks, Washington from Phoenix, Arizona. She's never had a thought in her fucking life. This has got to be one of the dumbest characters 
in the history of the world. We love her. She has no personality traits. Kristen Stewart is giving us a performance of absolutely nothing. If a blank sheet of paper was a person, it would be Bella Swan. She's got nothing going on. And we love her for it. They're also wearing the most iconic, like Abercrombie and Fitch, layered Aeropostale, weird camisole under every long sleeve shirt pulled over, skinny jeans. And I'm getting trauma flashbacks. Bella Swan has never had a thought in her life. She's 17 years old and she just moved in with her father in Forks, Washington. And usually she lives with her mother in Phoenix, Arizona. And you know she's from Arizona. Arizona because when she moves in, she moves in to Forks, Washington with a little cactus. Just so you know that she's from Arizona. She goes to school and she becomes friends with none other than the most iconic Barden Bella, Anna Kendrick. Anna Kendrick is in this movie giving it her all. She's going, oh, 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 oh. Those songs go fucking hard. In my head canon, obviously it's just actress Anna Kendrick playing someone else, but in my head, I'm like, that is Becca of the fucking Barden Bellas. She hasn't met the Triple Tones yet. She hasn't met Ben Platt yet, but she will. Like this is kind of her character's origin story. They have lunch together and they're like, okay, let me tell you about the Cullens. Every high school has like random people that are kind of low key celebrities to you and your friend group. Here's the thing. I want to be in this movie so bad. If you put me in Bella's shoes, this movie would be 20 seconds long because I just have one iota of critical thinking ability. I just have a little pinch of an ability to critical think and I'd be like, none of this makes any fucking sense. What the fuck is going on? Because they're like, oh, the Cullens are kind of iconic. They're all foster kids adopted by Carlisle Cullen and his wife Esme Cullen. Um, and they're all either teens or adults, but a lot of them are like 19, 20. And you're like, okay, that's normal. But Carlisle Cullen, they say in this movie, is 23 years old and also a doctor. First of all, the actor they got to play him, because they put him in powdered makeup, he looks like he's from the 18th century, powdered wig. This motherfucker should be signing the Declaration of Independence. He's not 23. That's not a 23 year old. That is not a 23 year old. Do not lie to me. That man is 45. Also, I did the math, and so Carlisle Kellen is like a vampire. His wife was 19, and he had to be 300 at that point. It's a rough age gap for me. I don't even care if she's of age. Like, I don't really think, maybe this is a hot take. I don't think 300 year olds and 19 19 year olds should be together. But they're still together now, so obviously it's worked out for them. Very happy for them. But Carlisle Cullen is running this motherfucking ship. He's the zaddy. I will say, this movie is obsessed with hot dads. Bella's dad is a dilf. Carlisle is a dilf. He's kind of a nasty, crusty, pasty dilf, but a dilf nonetheless. Bella specifically has scenes with her father, and I guess Kristen Stewart and this actor who plays her father have chemistry. It's also because, like, as with every movie, no parent can be cast as somebody who's 50 years old. They're like, every teenager is played by a 25 year old and every adult is played by a 30 year old. Every once in a while, Bella and her dad do a scene and you're like, are they gonna kiss? Like what the fuck is happening? This movie is obsessed with DILFs. The concept of a DILF alive and well in the town of Forks, Washington. But they all come in, the Collins like walk into the cafeteria, very like, anemic, Abercrombie and Fitch ad vibes. They're all also like dating each other. The foster kids are dating each other, which is like, I guess the Cullens walked so that the Fosters, the TV show could run. Again, if I was in this world, I'd just be like, so what the fuck is going on there? We have follow-up questions? No? Okay. I digress. Bella then meets Edward because they have bio together. And we get the best scene of all time. Give Robert Pattinson his Oscar. Because she walks in and because Edward is a vampire and he can smell her blood, he's like, but instead of acting like he's smelling something good and he acts like she smells like a piece of shit. Bella walks into this classroom and everyone's like, oh, Edward thinks the new girl smells like pond scum. The new girl smells like garbage. And Bella takes it personally as she should. If it was me, like I'd be like, I need to transfer classes immediately. I need to transfer, I'm being bullied. I need to transfer right now. Then we get an amazing iconic scene. One of the best scenes in Twilight, in my opinion. Bella's listening to her iPod classic, Wire Headphones Gang. Judging by like her not like other girls vibes, I think she's probably listening to like A Team by Ed Sheeran. She's spinning the Smiths. She's listening to a little known band called The Beatles. You might not know them, they're kind of underground. One of her classmates is doing stunt driving and doing donuts in the parking lot and her, a van almost slams into her. And imagine, this girl's at your school for a month, then she gets pancaked in the parking lot outside. What a story. But thank God Edward's a vampire. He's got super human speed and strength and he speeds, he runs in, stops the car with his hand, which is great. Bella lives, that's awesome. Later at school, she's like, what happened there? Cause you weren't near me and then you saved my life. Like she's kind of catching on because she's smart. She's not like other girls like she reads books and she's intelligent Like and you gotta remember that with Bella. She's intelligent and she's like 
something's up. I love that they paint this as she's like smart. It's like, yeah, she's smart, but also like everybody in the parking lot for sure saw him like run a hundred miles an hour. Like the theater kids were practicing their fucking scales and they saw that shit too. She's like, you're, what happened? Cause you're really fast. And he's like, no, he gaslights her. It's crazy. He gaslights her. This 117 year old is gaslighting a child. It's already so nasty that he's into her. He's like, no, actually I was right next to you the whole time. Yeah, you're crazy. Yeah, I was next to you the whole time. It really fucks with Bella, as it should. But also, if I was Bella, I'd be like, okay, but everyone else in the parking lot saw you. How am I the only person that saw this? It makes no damn sense. Then Bella and her friends go prom dress shopping. And while her friends are trying on prom dresses, Bella's not. Bella's reading a book because she's not like the other girls. Like, she's very different because Twilight is proving a belief that I have. And I've had it for a long time that if you're a girl, you either like books or you like prom dresses. Can't like both. Like girls either shop or they know how to read. So Bella just kind of watches her friends buy prom dresses, has a horrible attitude about it. And it's like, I'd rather read my book. And it's like, you didn't have to come prom dress shopping then. Have a toxic ass attitude about it. And then she goes to a bookstore. Cause like it has to be more on the nose. She has to be like, I actually just want to buy a book. I just want to buy a book. They have a really funny scene in this where they have a real big close up on her giving money and receiving the book as if the movie is trying to illustrate to people what it's like to be at a bookstore. And it's like, we don't need to see a close up to know that at a bookstore you exchange money for books. Like that's clear, we got it. We don't need like a, a play by play. On the way home, there's a pack of roaming sex criminal horny men who are, I guess, gonna try and, and commit a crime against Bella. But thank God Edward was stalking her. He was stalking her in a car, following her the whole time and he was able to save her. And I guess that's fine. I guess that's okay. Because I guess the evil you know is better than the evil you don't when you're about to get hurt. But thank God your stalker was there. And then they go to like a cafe and Edward's like, I can read minds. And you don't even know what those guys were thinking about you. Like they were thinking bad shit. And it's like, yeah, you don't need to read minds to do that. But he says that he can't read Bella's mind which is iconic. He can read minds, but not hers. And she takes that as I'm different. Again, I'm not like other girls. If somebody said that to me, I'd be like, is it because I have no thoughts? You can't read my mind because I d I'm dumb. Okay. Also, she just so readily accepts this. He's like, I can read minds. And she's like, cool, no questions. She then goes home, opens up her laptop and basically looks up the word vampire 900 times and decides that Edward's a vampire. And you need this for the plot, but like the believability of this, I find very funny. Like it would take me a really, really long time to be like, this person's a vampire just because I'd be like, well, vampires aren't real. So obviously I'm going crazy. Regardless, she goes and she confronts him the next day and we get some of the best scenes in cinematic history. Cause she's like, I know what you are. And he's like, say it, say it, say what I am. And she's like a vampire, the best. He then waxes poetic for about 20 minutes about how he's a killer. He's like, I've killed before. This is the skin of a killer. Bella, I'm built to kill. And she's like, I don't care. She's down so bad. She doesn't give a fuck. You should care, girl, you should care. Chica, girl to girl, telling you if you are into somebody and they are willingly letting you know that they have killed, take it under advisement. Just think about it for a minute. Just think about it for a minute. You know what I mean? He sparkles in the sun, so horny to her for some reason. He's crouched in a million trees in this scene. It's so fucking funny. He then can like run so fast that it's kind of like flying and he gets her on his back and he's like, Hold on tight, spider monkey. And it's like, you are 110 years old. I'm begging you to learn how to flirt. You've been alive for so long and you, this is your flirting. Uh, shoot me in the head. Like that would be, I'd get the ick right there. If I were Bella and I moved past the murder, I was like, murder's fine. And then he's like, hold on tight, spider monkey. I'd be like, I actually have bio. I gotta get to cam. So then they decide to date. He watches her constantly while she sleeps, which is rough. It's rough to watch. Like, it's just insane. Cause he doesn't sleep. He's a vampire. So he's like, I'll just fuck, I'll just chill. It's like, watch a movie, homie. Do a crossword next to me. You don't need to watch me sleep. I'm, I'm here. So they decide to do a family dinner at the Cullens so Bella can meet Edward's family. Very cute. Couple goals, really. And the Cullens are all vegetarians. And because they're vampires, that means they have animal blood. They don't drink human blood. Plant-based lifestyle, sustainability, kings and queens. We love to see it. Bella comes in and there's a throwaway line that's the funniest fucking thing anybody's ever written in their entire goddamn life. SNL, shaking in their boots, where they're making Italian food and somebody's like, do we even know if she's Italian? And then somebody else is like, well, her name is Bella. She's Italian. Every single actor fighting for their life with this script, fighting for their goddamn life with this script, trying to make it make sense. And I respect it. Her name's Bella. Make her spaghetti. Then at some point, Bella gets a paper cut and one of Edward's brothers, Jasper, gets ready to murder. He's like, well, I'm the newest turn. Like he's the newest vampire. He's hungry for blood. He honestly, he's like, I'm gonna fucking kill you. I'm gonna kill you. 
I'm gonna kill you. And they stop him, which is good. That's a red flag for me. Like, I don't know if I could move past that. Like, your family doesn't need to love me, but I don't wanna feel like your family's gonna murder me at the drop of a hat. What if I'm on my period? Can I not enter your house if I'm on my period because I'm gonna get eaten alive? Answer these questions. But then we get the most iconic scene in cinema history. Orson Welles found dead. Steven Spielberg in a ditch because this scene is everything. They play baseball and it's vampire baseball and it's fucking amazing. They play baseball to the song Supermassive Black Hole by Muse. It's fucking so good. I just, I can't even do it justice. You just gotta watch it. It's so sick. You know, Catherine Hardwick is making a film. She's making cinema. Alice is there. Alice is one of Edward's sisters and she's bi. That's all I have to say about that. Like, look at her haircut. That's a bi person. I'm sorry, that's a bi person. That is. They're all having fun, playing baseball. And then in the background of this entire movie, people are getting murdered in this town and they're getting eaten alive. And the police is like, it's an animal. And it's like, mm, maybe it's vampires eating human beings alive. And it's because there's a, a pack of traveling nomadic vampires. And they come up when the Collins are playing baseball and the Collins are like, can you like leave? Cause we, this is our turf. And like, we don't kill people. So if you could leave, so people don't think we're killing people, that'd be awesome. It has to be said, this group of vampires, they're fucking sexy. It's by panic and they're sexy. And they're like, yeah, we'll leave. But unfortunately, one of them is also a Draco Malfoy looking motherfucker. He gets scent of Bella's blood. And because she's not like other girls, her blood is so potent. And he's like, I have to kill her. I have to suck this bitch dry of all her blood. And that's the rules. That's the rules of life. So he's a tracker. And the Cullens are like, fuck. Well, that's bad. That's not good. And I get that they don't want to turn a 17 year old for no reason into a vampire. But it does seem like if the options are turn her into a vampire or she's going to get murdered, you know, let's put it to a vote. Yeah, let's pull, let's problem solve. But instead they're like, we need to get Bella gone. We're gonna hide her in Phoenix. Her and Edward are gonna separate because they're gonna think she's with Edward. They're like, we're going to Phoenix, it's fine. We're staying in the fucking Radisson in Phoenix, Arizona. It's all gonna be good. Draco Malfoy is like, no, I have your mom hostage, Bella. So you have to come to the ballet studio that you did ballet at as a child to save her. And here's why this scares me. If you're luring people to a location based solely upon their childhood interests and abilities. If he got my set, he'd be like, Carly, get your ass down to the improv classroom. And I can't be dead there. You cannot kill me in the improv classroom. I'll, I can't do that. I can't have that be what happens. But Bella goes down there by herself because she's dumb as fuck. She's so weak, period, mentally even and physically like she goes down there alone and you're like, what the fuck are you going to do? They have this intense fight in this mirrored ballet studio, which is sick. Her mom was never there. He was just, just tricking her, playing mind games with her. Bella falls 19 million times, because this was also, again, made in 2008, and this is when every movie executive thought that a woman has to be clumsy in order to be different. So she falls 9 million times. She should be dead. Like, she just should be dead. She just should. Like, I don't want her to, but it seems like that's what's gonna happen. And then the other vampires show up. They burn James alive. But before they had arrived, James bit her and put venom in Bella's body and she's like <laughs> So they're like fuck Edward you gotta suck the venom out of Bella But don't suck too hard because if you suck too hard then like you're close to her blood and then you're gonna kill her So you have to have control you have to control the beast within and it's really hard because vampires fucking love They love blood you wouldn't even believe it how much they love blood and here's why this makes no sense to me why does it have to be edward because a million times over in this movie they're like we're vegetarians because carlisle is immune to the smell of human blood they say it a bunch of times they're like carlisle is immune to the smell of human blood remember carlisle the 57 year old 23 year old he's immune to the, to the smell of human blood so why would he not suck it out this movie's obsessed with dilfs like get him in there but no it has to be edward because of plot he does it he controls himself you know we've got to applaud men for doing the bare minimum of not murdering your girlfriend congratulations then they go to prom and bella she's wearing her like little leggings under her prom dress because she's different converse to prom she's different she's still gonna go to prom but she's different she's different because she, re she reads books you know what i mean like she doesn't care about clothes and makeup because like she reads books they dance at prom under a gazebo alone because that makes sense and then bella's like edward i wanted to tell you I'm ready to become a vampire. And Edward's like, no, and fair enough. Like Edward is correct in this sense. Like you're 17. You cannot be making these decisions. You cannot decide to be immortal at 17. No, no. And then the cinematic masterpiece ends, but Bella, she, girlie's gonna become a vampire and we know that to be true. That's her one goal. That's her thing now. Yeah, I just needed to talk. I need to get my microphone of power in my hand and random out Twilight, cause that's the kind of girl I am. All of my links and shit is in the description below. My Instagram, TikTok, all that fun stuff. I'll see you soon. Take care of yourself.